that, that's the cue for me to say what's up case the underground and beyond hey uh i want to i want to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart as we start here is that i think this is like the fourth or fifth time that that daryl answer has been on the podcast and this is the first time that i have been on with you daryl <laughs> i feel like why this is, is it near and dear like, to your heart <laughs> i feel like it was purposefully like you were withholding i left you out of the yeah, goodness yeah, like <laughs> you know, serious when well, i was out each time, yeah. each time you were out of town or something Brian and I were like, hey, this this week. <laughs> That's exactly what I was feeling. Uh, near and dear might be the wrong word. Maybe it was just like a vulnerable place I wanted yeah. to come at. So yeah. uh, that was my way of saying uh, what's up and welcome, Daryl. Regular contributor. Regular contributor. And hub director, Daryl Answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah hey, thank you for having me. Daryl, uh, just for those of you that haven't seen his face, I think this is the first time we've done a, a video of yeah. Daryl. Yeah, first video, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just I'm a little sorry, bit. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm looking a little tired this morning. <laughs> but yeah. video, you immediately have to apologize. I don't know. If, uh, it's sorry. Like, that's sorry, like, folks. That's... <laughs> they heard the voice and now they see the face. Like, oh, that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> I, was, I, didn't, I didn't anticipate the yeah, beauty. Yeah, well. <laughs> beauty. Of the of the oh man! All right, everybody, catch your breath. <laughs> <gasps> Anyway, all right, Daryl, you can, uh, yeah, just give us a little background, man. What do you, where are you working in the city? Um, yeah, well. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks again for having me on. Um, always uh, a privilege to share a little bit of our story. Uh, so uh, my name is Daryl Answer, originally from London, grew up in London, actually in Brixton, um, southwest London, where I grew up. Moved to the States almost 20 years ago, so I've almost been here as long as I was in the UK. So I'm kind of one of those folks that, doesn't really belong anywhere um so i'm learning to own that like that that's just a part of my existence right now um stephanie and i my wife uh, and i we have two kids Jaden and kian and we live in kansas city missouri um on the east side of kansas city missouri uh, so about 10 years ago we started um, gathering some neighbors um, which eventually became new community um, and now we're one of the hubs of uh, Kansas City Underground. Um, and yeah, that's what I get to do is, um, you know, a part of what I get to do. Um, so I'm great. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, why don't you, uh, just because, uh, sorry, I gotta go back. Context, this is like your week number five in this series within a series around uh, coaching. Okay. We're, we did a longer series on this because we think it is critical to sustaining movements and being with ordinary people in the everyday stuff of life. Mm -hmm. um, so what I know about you is that coaching is a part of who you are. It's not just a, um, you know, it's not just a part of your hub. So why don't you talk a little bit about like the other stuff you do? So most of the directors in the underground, 90 something percent of us are all co-vocational. We do other jobs, work for other organizations as well. Right. This isn't, necessarily the, the only thing or for some even the primary thing so right. give us a little bit of background on the other side yeah absolutely yeah so um a number of years ago i started uh, my own llc called verge solutions um so that really focuses on helping organizations some some global work but mostly focused here in, on state in the states um, helping organizations shift from a deficit-based approach to community engagement to an abundance or an asset-based approach. Mm. Um, so um, I've been a part of the Asset-Based Community Development Institute for a number of years, and that's really shaped how Stephanie and I do our work. Um, but yeah, I do have the opportunity to work with and come alongside organizations, um, local, city, regional, you know, statewide um, to help them reimagine, you know, and even so, so that even down to, um, I'm currently coaching a group of houseless women right now. So, um, every Thursday night, I'm around a very big table with a group of houseless women. And we're talking about identifying our own power, um, and some mindset work. Um, and even how, once they get out of that place, they can be a part of building community themselves. So it's grassroots, which is where I live. Like that's my heartbeat is like being grassroots in the community with folks. 
but then also sitting at a computer, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> walking with uh, folks um, who are trying to make that shift in their context as well. Well, this has prompted another question that I didn't set you up for, but um, we'll let Corey talk eventually uh, as much as possible. <laughs> I'm just glad yeah, to be here. <laughs> like, not here. <laughs> um, like, what's what's the background? Like, where did all that come from as far as deciding, like, I'm going to give my life to coaching, um, shaping other people? Like, what, where did it come from? Yeah. Mm. I feel like everything in my life I've fallen into. So um, <laughs> this is – so years ago, people would just reach out and say, hey, Daryl, can we get together? I need to run something by you. So we get together and what happened was I would be working on my lunch break. I would meet with individuals who were, they were paid to like, this was a part of their job. I would yeah. give them advice. Then I would go home later in the day and Stephanie would be like, you know, they get paid to meet with you. You don't get paid to meet with them. We're going to have to figure this out because <laughs> we got bills to pay. So it came from a prompting from home. Like, okay, you're giving a lot of time to people who, you know, the, the challenge with coaching, sometimes you can coach and really it's up to the person if they're going to take it or not, you know, right. you can give advice, you can, you know, all these things. So it was also that, like, given my time. So then I also had to go through the discernment process of like, who am I going to give my time to? Mm -hmm. um, so there was, the, there was those elements, but through some friends of mine who have been doing this type of work for decades, um, they would bring me on to gigs that they were doing. And then eventually um, I was asked to form my own LLC because folks wanted me to be the main person. So it was a flip. I went from subcontractor to now main contractor on some gigs. And now I pay folks, um, you know, that way. So it's been a, a, a journey. Um, but yeah, it's been again, like it wasn't something I was looking for. It's just as life progressed. I've just, and I think this is part of coaching. It's just having... Um, discernment trying to listen to god and i think as coaches we need to figure out how the things we're inviting people into we have to make sure that we're practicing them those things ourselves in our own lives mm -hmm. um so um that's yeah that's what it's looked like for me so i wish i had a story where it was like i went and got trained in this went to school like i, I don't have that story at all it was just naturally relationships and kind of just progressed in this way no i, I like that that's your story. I, I, that's a very underground way that we, I mean, it seems like all of our stories are right. <laughs> more, more like born out of that kind of world than it is anything yeah. official. So yeah, man. Right. All right. So let's get into the meat. This is crazy, man. We're only, we're eight minutes in. Ooh. We've already covered a lot of, normally yeah. Corey and I waste everyone's time with <laughs> that's good. With this, and we've already covered good stuff. So um, anyway, we were talking about, like who are we going to interview in the coaching kind of series? Mm. And we have four five, six names. And it's like, man, we got to talk to Daryl because mm. your context on the East side of the Eastern part of the city mm -hmm. um, has shaped, formed a lot of like the shifts that we're trying to make as a whole network and being mm -hmm. together um, as a reminder that like, you know, where we were sort of born in Johnson County on the West side, of Kansas mm -hmm. city looks very different than the East side of Kansas yeah. city. Yeah. Um, and the, and the people that form the spiritual families that are, uh, that are new community. So like, we just want to hear from you. It's like, we got to hear from a different kind of context, a different mm -hmm. way of thinking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, talk to us about like, what does it look like to coach ordinary people mm -hmm. within new community and, uh, give us an overview of that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's important for me to name, like my situation, like my family situation. And, you know, have we talked about those of us in the underground, like we have, some of us have multiple jobs, you know, life is a lot, you know, we're also a special needs family. So that also has implications on how we do ministry. And actually mm -hmm. our son has helped shape. And I've talked about Kian on our previous podcast. So a lot of folks already know my son, but he has helped shape how we exist as a hub. So, my hey, coaching, so yeah. Let me hit like a timeout and throw one other thing in there too. You're about yeah, to yeah. say my coaching. So just remember where you're going. Yeah. Uh, if you were going to do this, perfect. If not, I'd like to ask you to include like you guys started as a church plant and made a shift towards 
breaking toward micro churches. Mm -hmm. These, you started centralized and then you went decentralized more. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe to include that as a part of like, yeah. there's some paradigm shifting that was going on for all of your people as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would say when we first started gathering, um, 10 years ago in our living room, um, yeah, that it's funny. Like, I feel like God had always given me this idea of having this decentralized, but we didn't have the people and my people. Mm -hmm. when I would share it with my people, they didn't understand what I was saying because all they knew was there's a pastor that preaches every Sunday that, you know, like just this, you know, traditional model. So I would share this idea with them and they're like, well, who's leading that? You know, who's going to do that? You know, and in my mind, I'm like, you, you guys, <laughs> what's beautiful is, is what's beautiful is the same people who ask that question, they actually lead in, in their homes right mm -hmm. now. So that's what's cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, um, there was that shift. So I would say it was, some years of us meeting as this centralized, but then again, having been a special needs family, first of all, we can't, with our son, we had to figure out how we lead in a different way. We, we felt like God was calling us to lead, but I also believe if God, if God is calling one person in the family to lead, God is calling the, the whole family. So we had to figure out, okay, what does this look like for our family? which then impacted how we existed as a spiritual family. So then the pandemic, when that came, that gave us a perfect opportunity to then start making some shifts. So that's when I started coaching individuals who I saw had more of leadership and had kind of been journeying with, journeying with them for some years, started some coaching with them, beginning with, hey, here's some gifts that I see in you. Mm -hmm. right? Here's some things I see in you. Um, and I would love to see you take some of those gifts and be able to use those gifts to bless others within the community. For some of our folks, that was scary, though. It was it was really scary. And one story was so beautiful. So there's a couple in our, you know, who are a part of the new community. They lead one of our spiritual families. This was in the <laughs> pandemic because we were still meeting on Zoom or on front porches. So... I get this text like, hey, can we come and talk to you? I'm like, sure. You know, so they come over and long story short, um, this leader who I had to like have this coaching conversation with, an ongoing coaching conversation with, he's like, hey, um, I'm starting to have feelings that I don't know what to do with. I'm starting to have these feelings for these people. I'm starting to care for these people and I don't know what to do with that. And so it's almost, it was just beautiful, like, he almost like worked his way into the feeling. You know, it wasn't like there was this thing happening inside of me. He had to like, it was like, no, I'm asking you to do this. I see this in you. Start leading this group because he is an incredible facilitator, even though he doesn't believe he is. And then God started doing something in his heart. As mm -hmm. a result of that, Stephanie and I commissioned him on our front porch. I laid hands on him, prayed over him and said, these are, this is your church, right? Mm -hmm. so my front, you know, and then after that, we find out that he was like, you know, he works, you know, for at and so He was like going in people's homes and he was like praying for folks and asking them how he can pray for them. So anyway, it was just beautiful after that. But they still, yeah. they still got their group going. Um, and now he has other families as a part of it. So it's like coaching has looked like me trying to meet people where they are. And then also saying, here's, here's a few things. Like, what do you think your next step could be? in this situation, you know, so they're naming various situations, various mm -hmm. challenges and helping to walk through the good and the challenges and just quest just trying to figure out the right questions while also leaving room for the spirit um, to, to like to move and for that us together to listen to the move of the spirit. How we then shift and decentralize, I'm trying to go back to your question, is yeah. um, again, in the pandemic, again, we're meeting on porches, meeting online, God is doing beautiful things because there are people who are seeing us. I even went out to Jamaica and my whole family in Jamaica was watching in my cousin's little store. He has a little <laughs> shack. He has a, literally a shack that he sells stuff out of. And they were watching us in his little shack, right? Wow. Um, so just beautiful things were happening. And so we're coming through the pandemic and we, we had this moment now, like, okay, do we come back to being centralized, which this isn't language that we use, but, you know, for, for our purposes. 
So do we, do we come back together or do we figure something else out? We have a very small budget. We don't have a building. So the YMCA was willing to open up for us. So it was like, actually it was the same leader. It was like, no, we don't have the resources to pay each week to rent a space. But we've been meeting as families. And he came up with spiritual families because I, I threw micro churches out and they were like, what's that? So, what's that? They, uh, <laughs> so they, they took that language. And again, I think that's part of coaching, being OK. Like, yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, so I had, a, I had sheets and everything, micro churches. And they're like, no, nah, scrap that. <laughs> was, they're like, we became, we became spiritual families in the pandemic. And that's what we're going to run with. So then that because it came from them. You know, and I'm trying to, you know, obviously lead and direct, also coach, like this dance, you know, it's like just trying to figure that out. But the spiritual family concept, though 10 years ago I shared it, it wasn't mm-hmm. until towards the end of the pandemic when they owned it mm-hmm. and, and are running with it. So now what what coaching looks like is trying to meet people again everyone's crazy busy we all got crazy things going on sometimes there are crises so i'm not only coaching leaders in how to lead you know the actual spiritual family space but we've had a number of homicides so how do we help our spiritual family leaders walk with a family and bless the community um, after there's been a tragedy or Mm -hmm. walking with um, a spiritual family leader in the midst of celebration, right? So, um, mm. yeah, just different things. Like, so it's, it's, it's not just the space itself and we're in the word together, but like, how do you care for your people, like their whole lives and, mm. and broaden, broaden their, their perspective, you know, because in our context, we have to be holistic. Like we cannot just be concerned with the soul we have to be concerned with the whole person, whole community, whole family, right? So it is stretching for our leaders as well, because again, if they've just come back from, if they've just kind of, you know, come out of that predominant model of church where you get the word and leave, it's like, Mm -hmm. no, that's not what we're about. We, you know, our spiritual families, we talk about grace, healing, and liberation. So it's whole person, whole family, whole community. Mm, that's yeah. so good. That's so good. Oh, I had like four or five thoughts. Um, for the sake of time, um, let's let's lean in. We like to think about, you know, w- what kind of like barriers exist, you know, context to context, you know, mm-hmm. just coaching everyday people. Uh, I mean, you, you've touched on some of it, but maybe diving in further, like what barriers do you come across in your coaching relationships Uh mm-hmm just in your world? I mean, I would say life, you know, like there are see, there are seasons yeah. in my life where I can't be as available as I want to. Yeah. So even just an example, I had to travel for two weeks for work. Um, so last month I was gone for two weeks. When I came back, I had this guilt. Mm. It's like, that's two weeks I went with my people. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that's real. Like that's something I put on myself. Um, so I think just my work, life, family, um, that's one thing. But then also my other people's work, life, family. So trying yep. to figure out how to make the time for us to connect. Mm. Um, so again, because all of our work schedules are just crazy. And, you know, we have one spiritual family that isn't on the east side. It's actually in Mission, Kansas. So I'm trying to figure out how I can be there for the leaders. We are trying to form a coaching equipping team, but we're not there yet. That's the only team we haven't built out yet because mm. I don't think I'll, I'm, we're not ready for that. We have other teams, but when it comes to, I'm like the main coach. Mm-hmm. So the biggest challenge is just life. And then there's also the relational aspects, you know, like, you know, we all have those days when we're just off when it's just like something has rubbed that, you know, so I've, I've walked into some coaching situations and I'm like, man, this ain't the right time for this conversation. We need to talk about mm-hmm. something else because you're not in the right place. I've come in with weird energy, you know, it's just those, <laughs> those types of, you know, that those types of things. That's and good. it's personal. 
it's yeah. personal. So most of the coaching happens in homes, you know, yeah. or like I'm not, I'm not, you know, we're not, there's no building to go have a meeting at, you know? So it's like coaching is also a vulnerable practice for us mm. um, because we're entering each other's homes. Though we, that's a part of what we do, but still like, it's one thing to like create a space and we're talking about Jesus and, you know, but it's another thing where it's like, man, how are you doing leading your folks? Like how, mm. how is your marriage? How is your, then it's like a different level, you know? So I would say those things for sure, just life schedules and just us being people. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it, It's funny because it, it, in some ways it sounds over simplistic and the other ways it's like everyone hearing that is nodding. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I, I mean, I, I talk about this all the time and, and some startup coaching stuff, which by the way, when you mentioned like the aspect of you just looking at someone and be like, I see this in you. Yeah. Like, I feel like that is 50% mm -hmm. of like kind of that, what we sometimes call startup coaching. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know, just like giving permission or yeah. allowing people to be like, man, this is actually, I think how God created you. Know, so that, that's just a big mm -hmm. piece of it. Again, you help fan that flame. Um, but I, I just, I think I, I talk about this a lot with people, even from starting groups from scratch and discovery groups and micro churches. And it sometimes takes weeks to just find a time on a calendar to get multiple people together in the same room. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you stop to look at everything we talk about missionary pathway, you know, being disciple makers, seeing churches come up, coaching leaders, coaching church leaders, like we live in a very, very busy kind of chaotic society. And I just think it's good for us to remember that and to give, give ourselves grace. Yeah. Less things sometimes take a little bit longer or like, yeah, you know, we have multiple jobs and we're, you know, you're traveling for two weeks or whatever it is. Like, I just think that is super practical in yeah. an American context. I mean, people are busy all around the world, but yeah, right. I mean, people who come from different places and come here. They're like, Oh man, you all are crazy. <laughs> it's like the, the business of schedule. So I yeah. think that is like, it sounds simple, but it's like so practical. Yeah, yeah. We're no, busy. it's it's a it's an ongoing challenge. And again, because we are coaching and leading, we feel this responsibility. So I I have to ask myself as the coach, what's true and what's not true when it comes to the feelings that I feel about not mm -hmm. being able to get with my folks as consistently as I want to. So we mm -hmm. tell our people we you know we want to have an integrated faith. We want to be a church that's woven into the fabric of our community. This is These are the things that our people are doing. So if that's true, why do I feel like I have to be tied to this every week, check-in, coaching me? You know, it's just like, that's not how life works. <laughs> you know, like it's not, yeah. it's not, especially when we want to create these organic, you know, movements in our communities. Um, mm -hmm. It would be great if it worked that way. You know what I'm saying? Like if we all, if this is all we did, then sure. Um, yeah. And if this is, if, if leading spiritual family was all that my folks are doing, then sure. But some of my spiritual family leaders, like they're raising kids, grandkids, they got multiple people living in their home, they're working jobs, they're in school, like all of these things, you know? And so it's like, okay, let's, yeah, exactly what you said, Corey. And Corey, I think you're muted. Um, uh, he's, he's coming through this. Oh, okay. I'm like, man, you just, <laughs> you just and I was like, oh, you didn't, they didn't pick up anything. <laughs> we're, we're in the same room, so we have to okay, do Okay, like... cool, 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 cool. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, uh, that's right. I was yeah, like, so... so I am here, but he's muting me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to, it's funny because after the recording every week, every time you talk, like in the uh, subtitles that it produces for it, it says yeah. my name. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna fumble through this next question but i'm gonna try to like say it in a way that hopefully you'll get what i'm saying and uh -huh. answer it um so trying to put myself or not put myself in but like you put yourself in the position of the people that you coach mm -hmm. life is a challenge that they bring to that coaching conversation mm -hmm. um and you're like I think what you're saying is you're cultivating a coaching culture mm -hmm. that when you started wasn't there because there was no paradigm for that. Now there's a paradigm for that. Mm -hmm. So like the person you're talking about, three people that you coach, just combining them into one person. Yeah. 
when they come into that environment and you actually have a successful coaching because <laughs> life didn't get in the way, like what are other challenges that like they're bringing to the table? That's like them trying to go like, this is, I'm not used to this with church. Yeah. That guy was like my spiritual leader, pastor, tell me what to do. I just go live my life. But now he's like, he thinks I am supposed to be leading this and he's cool with it. <laughs> like, yeah, what, are, a big shift. what are they like? What are just challenges that they sort of bring to the table that you're like trying to overcome as you do coaching and foster more of that environment? Yeah, that's a good question. I just yeah. want to, I just, I want to affirm you <laughs> on a great question. A good question. He's really proud of that question, Daryl. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Write that down. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say, I mean, you said the word permission. So last year we gathered our leaders. With, I'm tr again, I'm trying to do a better job of not only coaching individuals, but then getting our leaders together. Yeah. Um, and it's hard. So we did it at the end of last year. And... Um, one of the challenges they brought up around, and we focused specifically on spiritual families for part of our time. And one of the challenges was people didn't feel permission. So they mm. may have had ideas, but they weren't sure. and still unlearning that old pastor paradigm, like, will the pastor allow us to do this? Or because I hadn't given them certain things, you know, so I would say a challenge is the permission, but also a lack of imagination. Mm. Um, yeah, because we use imagination in other areas of life, but I don't know when it comes to the church, our imagination is kind of stunted. Mm -hmm. Um, so one of the things with our, or that I encourage our people to do is like, take some time. And we do that. We dream together. Like if we could do yeah. anything over this next year, what would we do? Mm. And we just, you know, whiteboard it, you know, like let's dream, let's dream. So I think that's another thing as well. Um, yeah, and I think there's always going to be the challenge of feeling like I'm inadequate. Mm. I'm inadequate for this task. Um, I don't have the training. I don't have the, you know, whatever the credentials may be, um, especially in a context. And Brian, you mentioned this in, when we first started in a context like where I am, there are hundreds of churches around us, but they're not, unfortunately, they're not as engaged with the community. But when we talk when we talk about missional work, for the most part, or outreach or whatever the case may be, there is still this idea that it's either an outside group um, or, you know, the person with the titles or credentials or whatever. They're the ones who do ministry and we are the ones who um, consume it or receive it. Yeah. Um, so, again, it's still that working through that. Um, it's still a challenge. So many good things. I know, man. We should probably begin to 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 wind down. Um, man, but I had one thought. Yeah. You touched on two things that have been like, I've been like really leaning into a lot lately. We just had a gathering with a lot of young adults and uh, and there was like two, two of the three things that I really felt like God was pressing in on me to like kind of bless this crew with was one, just basically that they would, they would be they would be unleashed for their own creativity and imagination for kingdom building. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm I, just what you're saying with that. I think that's so true. Like we've been so, Oh, what's a, what's a more PG way of saying neutered. Uh, we're, I mean, we just add this been point. stunted. Yeah. It? I mean, it's yeah. just like, we, we don't even know who we are. We've domesticated God's people. And I was thinking about it, man. This is, this is my, my deep wisdom of the day. It's uh do you guys watch oh, well, it? We'll you, we'll be the judge yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys do you guys ever watch Moana? Oh yeah, man. Yeah. We just watched it the other night. Okay. I love Moana one because like I'm originally from Hawaii, so it's like it just in general is like calls to me. But the whole idea of Moana, right? Like she's I think the ocean called to her. It's, it, I'm sorry. She's she's a leader. <laughs> She's going to be the, you know, she's like a princess here and they're just like staying on the island. They all, all they, they need is on the island, but yeah. she feels this call to go to think outside the box that, you know, and then the whole idea is like with the help of the grandma, mm -hmm. she discovers this old ship and that they're voyagers, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like the very nature of who they are. They are, they're voyagers. And so I'm just like looking at this crowd of young adults. I'm like voyage. Like this is like, this is who we are as followers of Jesus. Um, so like, I'm just like, I'm hearing all the things that you're saying. And Did I'm you just sing like, over them? I mean, I just, <laughs> make <Sorry. way. laughs> 
Yeah. Just, it was awesome. Yeah, then we just blasted it and we started dancing. <laughs> and then I was like, you're welcome. Anyway, a lot of great references. So that, I mean, that's like amen to every to everything that you're saying. Um, and yeah, and just the last one of uh, permission. Like, again, just blessing people yeah. with the permission to do that. Like, you don't have to wait for mm-hmm. Daryl to say yes. Yeah. Like, follow up. I mean, that's that's when we're going to see transformation, I think, in our in our yeah. neighborhoods, and our cities. So if Daryl um, tells me yes, though, I'm going. Well, that's even. Yeah, it's even. Worse. That's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like the grandma. You're like the grandma. You're Moana. a grandma. Oh. <laughs> You're like it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So all that being said, sorry. So I'm going to kind of give you the last word, Daryl, but kind of prompt you with this thought. Mm, yeah. Uh, why do ordinary people, maybe even particularly in, you know, East KC metro area where you're hanging out, like, why do these people, any people, particularly your people need coaching? Mm. And it may be a lot of things we were just talking about, but I want yeah. to give, give you that last word. Yeah. I mean, when you think of, well, I think we all need it. I think the reason why we all need it, <clears throat> I mean, you just think about a sports coach, right? The, the coach sees the whole game, you know, like when you're playing, you yeah. see like your position, your role. This is what I'm supposed to do. When I get that ball or whatever the case may be, like I know what I'm supposed to do. The coach knows the whole game <clears throat> or at least more than you do, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so um, I think, I think that's, uh, I think that's part of it, um, you know. So when I meet with my people, and I just my first thing as a coach is my posture is listening first. Yeah, what's been happening, and then yeah. I hear all these amazing like literally I went to go see again the same couple where they live a block away from me, and I had been able to connect with them. I get there and they're like, "Hey, connecting with this neighbor, we're about to start a men's Bible study." I'm like, "What?" Uh, connecting with another cousin who. He's been in, doing amazing in AA and is now being able to, you know, coach others. But that's through the coaching that he, you know, it's just like all these things are happening mm-hmm. and they're sharing this. And me as the coach can say, hey, do you see how this fits to that? Do you see how this connects to that? Do you mm-hmm. see what we've been talking about for the last 10 years, how you're doing exactly what we've been talking about? And they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's why it's like you need someone who isn't in the trenches and can help you step back and look yeah. like, That's Oh, wow. Look at what God is doing. Um, because yeah. when you're in it, you're tired, you're frustrated, you're trying to, you know, keep kids, you know, you're just trying to do whatever. Um, but then to have someone, I think that's why coaching conversations are so beautiful. Um, because it's like, um, you know, you get to, again, get to step back, and see the game a little clearer. You can't see the whole game. Yeah. Only Jesus can see the whole game. Yeah. Um, man. But we get to step back and we're like, oh my goodness, I see what God's doing over there, what God's doing over there. And then it's like, okay, I think I can go on another week. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Right, what, what, what's, what's your sport, by the way? Is it, is it, is it soccer? Is uh, it? No, actually, my sport was boxing. Ooh. I, I was a boxer. Man. Yeah. Long, a long time ago. I, I have zero skill now. That was, that was, that was a good 20, no. 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought the same thing. I was like, I don't care how long ago that was. I, I'm still not yeah, gonna, it was actually Thai boxing. It was Thai boxing. Then I got into boxing for some years. So. <laughs> I mean, not that I ever want to throw hands with Daryl anyway. <laughs> I, I both great. don't want to. And I kind of more want to now. And right, I don't, right. It's straight, straight dad bot over here. They ain't nothing. <laughs> they ain't no action. No action. Hey, Daryl, thanks, man. That was, um, yeah, thanks for being with us. That was super encouraging. Yeah. That last word was really good. Super insightful, super practical. Yeah, really good stuff, man. Yeah. All right, man. We won't wait so long to have you back. We appreciate you, brother. All right. Thank you all.